thank you. Here. Is this the microphone you want me to use? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, well, so much, so much has been covered, and I know it's late. Um, I, my, my three M's that I was going to talk about but have really been covered was message, mail, and muscle. And I'm going to sort of just go right to the muscle. Although, um, you, your message is critical. And um, I'm just going to use as an example when I ran for the Nevada City Council. Um, I ran against three entrenched incumbents. The, the, the City Council, I mean, Nevada, politics in Nevada is a contact sport. I didn't know that <laughs> when I ran, <laughs> but, uh, but it is. So the, the, the city council had a huge issue that they called street gate, where one of the city council members had had a street paved for his son. It, nothing was illegal about it. He just called up public works and said, could you pave this street, and they did. But one of the council members made a huge thing about it, called the TV, it was on TV. Some people would walk out of council meetings. It was really, it was intense. So when I decided to run for council, I was meeting with my, with my campaign consultant, and he was reading all of the, the, uh, the literature in the paper, the newspaper stories, and he said, you know, it sounds like this council needs adult supervision. They need to get out of the sandbox. So he designed my walk piece, which was, isn't it time for our city council to grow up, which is a little boy in his dad's clothes. And so I, would, I started walking precincts. The election was in November. I started walking in April because I have a field manager that makes Attila the Hun look like, you know, <laughs> kindergarten. We walk and walk. I walked to 9,000 homes in the city council race. And um, so I would hand this out at the door. People would smile. But to get to the muscle, I want to talk about courage, really. That's what I'm equating it with. At the first candidates forum, which was a Chamber of Commerce breakfast, we were all, there were, I think there were five or six candidates running for council. And so we were to give our position. And I just froze. I just thought, you know, here are the incumbents sitting here. And I have to say, you know, our city council acts <laughs> like children and it's time for them to grow up and I didn't say a word. I just talked about, and here's, you know, I've worked for John Burton and here's are my qualifications. And after it was over, um, Gary Giacomini, who was a longtime supervisor, came up to me and said, why the hell should they vote for you? You didn't say anything, you know? And I thought, oh God, all right. So the, the watershed moment for me for getting courage was when we went to the IJ endorsement hearing. And I didn't know that we all went in together. I thought we were going to go in separately. So I was all ready, you know, with my thing. And there we were all five sitting together. And so I know they started, the first person they asked was Jean McClamey, why are you running? And while she was giving her answer, I thought to myself, okay, it's now or never. If you want to be on the city council, and you want it, and you want to do this work, then you'd better just suck it up and do it. And so I did. I didn't get their endorsement, but I won. <laughs> and um, that that taught me a lot. That you really do have to stand up for what you think is right, for what you think the the issues are. And oh, this was the walk piece. This that that we walked with. And uh, then we did one other piece, which was. Um, hard hitting. It wasn't personal. We didn't get into their personal lives, but we talked about their position on Bahia and how they were going to, they wanted to bring in 420 homes. And I think that's fair game. When I, when, when I run, someone can attack me on my, which is what I'm learning now. I mean, I just had such a great four years and now when you've been an incumbent for a while, they really get you on your record and you've got to be ready. Uh, when I ran for supervisor, then two years later, um, I walked to 3,500 homes, I want you to know, and uh, because Nevada's huge. <laughs> it's a, it, in land as well as population. San Rafael is still the most populous, but we're gaining, Gary. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that we did that you might want to think of is when we walked a precinct, after we walked a precinct, we sent, we, we hand addressed this card. And it just said, I enjoyed meeting with you recently. We sent it to every home where the person came to the door. Your input has been essential to my work. 
And then we listed some of the issues they have, like helping to bring Whole Foods and Trader Joe's to Novato, improving the beauty of our landscape by strengthening the hillside ordinance, uh, improving transportation to Novato with Major A. And so they got this. Um, this was my walk piece, which gave some of the issues on the back. Then what, what's important to do is when you're running and you're in a contested race, and this was contested, you need to let them know first who you are. And so, and so the, the uh, slogan from, for this race was that Judy Arnold gets it done. And so we talked about opening Trader Joe's in Nevada, which I had worked for on the city council and really helped bring it in. And um, then we did one that said, um, uh, been here, done that, because I'd worked for 13 years at the Civic Center. And I had three of the supervisors endorsements, which was great. So that was good. Um, in the general, uh, in, and so we had three running in the, in the primary, and I, we, I didn't, we didn't get 50% plus one, so we had another election in the general in November. And in that election, um, they did send it out a hit piece that was very personal. And we really followed the, the uh, I adhere to the advice of Bill Clinton. He said, if, it, if anyone, we answer any attack within 24 hours. And we did. And, um, and we listed the phone number of my opponent and said, call her and tell her that Novato doesn't like this kind of campaigning in Novato, mm -hmm. and people did call her. <laughs> and, um, you know, so I think you, I think you need to have courage. You need to say, well, a campaign brings forth things in you that you didn't know you had. And you either step up and do it or, or you just kind of sit in the back. But it, it's, I think it's an incredible experience. It is for women because, you know, growing up, there aren't a lot of women heroes. You know, you, you, you're, not, you're not football players, you're not basketball stars, but you really do find yourself and to be a, a hero when you run for office. So I, um, the, la, la, la. I think, I think that's, I think those are all the things because everything else has been covered. Uh, one last thing, walking precincts is critical. If you have to choose between the two, I believe phone banking is, is the better, is the better hit because walking, you, so many people aren't home. Uh, we started, we walked uh, Saturday starting at 11, Sunday starting at 1, and then I, we would walk after work until it got dark. Phone banking, you can reach so many more people. You, you'll, I gained weight, so because I would call people and I would say, so Mr. Smith, can I count on your vote? And he'd say, no, Judy, I'm sorry, and I'd hang up and eat a payday bar. <laughs> so you, just need to, you need to be prepared for that. But, it, it, and you can also do phone banking with cell phones. You can have people at your house, at their house, they can bring their cell phones. You no longer need to get some business person to offer you their office. You can, so, f uh, precinct lists where you phone, because in, in, for the city council race, by the end of the council race, we, we knew we were gonna win because of our phone banking, because we had ID'd the voters. Because you, yeses, you don't call back again. Noes, you scratch off. It's the undecided, you call back again. And I remember coming out one Saturday, and we just all looked at each other, and I said, I think we're going to do this. So the, the I being the voters in phone banking is critical. So if you have to choose, I think you should do both. But if you, if, if you don't have time or you can't, do phone banking and have that, that conversation with them. So good luck. I know exactly what it's like, and, and you're going to do great, all of you. And I'm just glad we're here. And if you have any questions, call us. Thanks. Okay.